Is becoming an electrician a good idea for the future? Or are we going to be replaced by AI? Hello and welcome to Toolbox Talk for Electricians. Not today. And so many jobs are becoming irrelevant. Over time, jobs have been replaced by modern technology. A £100,000 machine can tell you a fault on a vehicle 10 times quicker than a mechanic can these days. Of course, you still need someone to push that test button, but employing someone to push that test button is a lot cheaper than employing a fully qualified mechanic. Is the job of electricians going the same way? In this podcast, that's exactly what we're about to find out. Toolbox Talks for Electricians, loading electricians with the tools and the skills they need to reduce stress, gain back time, and earn more money. Welcome back once again. My name is Ben Poulter, your host. Can electricians be replaced by an automated computer? Or will electricians be replaced by a computer or even a robot one day in the future? There is technology out there that can create a podcast for you. You might have heard of a software that just recently came online that just answers questions for you. It's a bit like Google. This got me thinking of the future of electricians and will we actually be needed one day? Just like some of the jobs that used to be around that, that, that were replaced by technology. There was a lift operator, a switchboard operator, a lamp lighter, a typist, or a film projectionist. can pronounce that very well. You struggle to think these days that there are actually jobs in the past. Before supermarkets had fridges, there used to be milkmen that delivered your milk. When was the last time you saw a milk float riding around the streets early hours of the mornings? I used to see them every morning. It was a year or so ago now that I helped install six new offices. They all came pre-wired. All you had to do was join the walls together and plug them in. And I also found out that that's exactly how McDonald's restaurants, restaurants go up in the UK. That's how come they go up so fast. So whatever you say, the future is evolving right in front of us. And I don't think it's going to be long before these fabricated buildings are also houses. But with all the technology evolving, there's still the need for someone who maintains that equipment. Even if every home, business or structure becomes pre-wired, there will always be faults that occur. And that's where electricians come in. A machine can maybe tell you that there's a fault where a rat has maybe chewed through a cable, but can they repair it efficiently? I don't really think so. You're gonna need a human being and not just any human either. You're going to need an electrician. Our jobs may change slightly too. Because let's be honest, if you're a little older in your 40s like myself, and you've been around and working as an electrician from a young age, it's changed a lot already. I remember the days we used to put thousands of the GU10 down lights in. And then they upgraded the lamps to LED. But now you get rid of the GU fitting completely, and it fits an LED colour changing smart light. And sockets have also changed because now it's a good idea to, to fit a 35mm back box. I used to have a van full of 25mm back boxes because that was the norm. That was the norm what I was taught in college and that's what the other lads that I grew up with that taught, taught me how to do electrics, that's what they used to use, a 25mm box. But uh, ironically though, when I did a rewire a little while ago, the old boxes that I pulled out, they were twice as, twice as thick, twice as hard wearing and they were 35mm. So that's interesting how we've gone back to how they did it in the past. But the point of these 35mm boxes is because of these USB sockets, these Wi-Fi sockets. That's what everyone wants in their house these days. And we know as electricians that any socket can be changed to a socket with a USB on it. But some customers think that you have to install new wiring for them. And that's one of my email nails that I send out to my customers to let them know that yeah, any USB socket can be fitted to any socket. You can change it quite easily, let the customers know. And you get quite a lot of jobs that people go, well, I didn't know this. So you can go and inst you can uh, exchange their normal sockets, double, double gang sockets in the kitchen maybe, for these fancy USB sockets, and they're happy for it. There is something else happening in the world right now at the moment with electric cars too. We're desperately trying to reduce our carbon footprint and make everybody buy an electric car. The vans, yeah, they're not quite there yet, 
but the cars have taken off in a huge way. So much so that there's not enough car chargers installed around the country to handle the demand. And this leads to energy companies crying out for EV installers to work around the clock to install these new car chargers. But there's a small problem I see though. A lot of these online courses to train someone to become an electrician, they also add in an EV charging qualification. And these EV chargers, they're mass produced from so many different companies all over the world, along with all the installers that are mass produced and they're not having a fantastic amount of electrical knowledge or experience that charges that are built quick. And this doesn't just go for any old charger, this goes for the Tesla chargers too. They're sort of built and shoved out quick and you see queues at 10 chargers because only one works. They go faulty quick. But with the amount of money the government and the car manufacturers have thrown at electric cars, they're going to keep paying electricians to install these charging points. And then they're going to need obviously periodic testing. So the work of EV charging is only going to get more and more in demand. But another thing that's going to get rid of a lot of the old electricians that don't want to advance with technology and don't want to be familiar with the technology of smart lighting. It is a little bit complicated sometimes because if you think about it, a light fitting that comes saying it will work with Alexa or Google, you can be sure that customer will want you to hook it up to their Alexa or Google to, to work with it. So unfortunately for your old school electricians that still walk around with your flip phone, they're not going to be able to figure it out. It is difficult and it is challenging sometimes to figure out how the software works to get it hooked up, to get the Wi-Fi sort of synced in with that light fitting. It's a bit of a challenge sometimes to get it all working together properly. You've got to register that product and there's no point in registering that product to yourself. You've got to register it in the customer's phone so the customer's got to trust you enough with their email and their passcodes to be able to register that product on their app, on their phone. I do know a few electricians that have spent a good few hours trying to get this to work. Unfortunately for some guys, these are the things that customers want more and more. Siemens it has a coffee machine you can turn on from an app. Now, personally, I don't see the point. Because you, st you still have to go to that coffee machine and pick the coffee up and drink it. There's no point in making a coffee if you're not next to it. But, however, if someone has one and they've paid an extra 200 quid for that function, they love to stand next to it and show you, look, I could do it from my app. You're two foot away, mate. You might as well press a button. But another advantage in technology for electricians is the renewable energy, mainly solar and wind farms, and not just them huge farms either. There are customers these days that have solar panels on their roof in housing estates. I even know someone that has their own wind turbine in the garden. And both these renewable energy sources, they use inverters. Who install and maintains inverters? Electricians, once again. And this is why there's so many options when becoming an electrician. You don't have to be a domestic installer. I know many electricians who hate house bashing, as they call it. But the experience you gain working with power and electrics, it can take you in so many different career options. This is probably why that I believe that all those years ago when I was told by my dad, get a trade behind you, you'll never be out of work. And I think it's still true to this day. But maybe even more if you're an electrician. In the modern world, it needs electricity to function. There are people all over the world who will pay a fortune for their supply to never go off. Then to also have a backup if it does go off just in case it goes off, just in case there's an interruption. I don't want the internet to go down. I don't want their computer to go off. And they will pay a good amount because we don't have a lot of disruptions to the power in the UK. But there is a lot of people that will have UPSs, that have backup systems installed into their house. And a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply, was something I used to work on a lot over the world for telephone communication companies. We installed them and we... We installed them and we maintained them. But these days, electricians are being asked to install backup generators to domestic premises, where they also have to install a UPS because of the five second delay that it takes for the generator to kick in or the automatic changeover to switch over. People don't like that disruption. So they'll also have a UPS just to take up them five seconds. And these are people with money to burn. They'll pay an electrician to put the best equipment in and they'll probably never use it. 
So as an electrician, or even training to be an electrician, you do have a job for life. The work is out there. You just need to get your name out there in the world for people to be able to find you and call you. And that's the plan on what I'm helping do with this podcast and also inside of the Toolbox Talk for Electricians group on Facebook. You can get a link in the show notes below. Now, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you back here Monday, 6 a.m. every week. Until then, I'll see you again. There are some advantages to good technology. On, off, on, off. Yeah, it's not bad, but yeah, it's all right. I can see this being quite handy.